Hello, beautiful people of Earth. Today I come to you with a reading regarding what moon magic is accessing you under this pink moon. This is the full moon in April. Um, this moon is known by many names as most moons are, but the pink moon is sort of the energy of um, really leaving the cold winter days and going into spring, finding that, that power to grow through the mud, um, the the energizing feeling of just pushing right through all of the the weight that has been holding us down in in winter and in hibernation which has served its period we've rested and now we're getting to this point of wanting to grow wanting to heal wanting to flourish in the summer months and the spring and summer months wanting to get to that point so today we are um, reaching messages, what will help us get to or access that moon magic? What will help us um, have our brightest blooms in these coming months? And um, sort of possibly looking at what could be keeping us from getting to these beautiful blooms. So that's what we have today. This is a collective reading. Make sure that you tune into the collective energy. Um, know that whatever messages are here today, um, you're allowed to not resonate with. If it doesn't feel right, let it go to the next person. Um, and also understand that tarot and oracle do not dictate your lives. These are simply messages for you to interpret into your personal life. This is a collective reading. You can feel free to reach out for a personal reading. Um, but for today's reading, we are tuning into this collective moon energy that we are all under right now, um, including the earth, including nature. You know, you can see this pink, this fresh energy um, in nature right now. And so, yeah, let's get into that. I'll leave a 30 second meditation if you'd like to spend some time um, and I will give you a close up on the rocks as well. Under pile number one, we have a raw prenite chunk. Under pile number two, we have a river rock, a heart-shaped river rock. And on pile number three, we have a polished mukite chunk. Okay, hello, pile number one, you chose the pre-night chunk, and we are going to be getting into the moon magic that is accessing you or you are trying to access under this pink moon. We've got tons of oracle and tarot. We're going to start with the tarot cards. Um, yeah, we're just going to go straight with the cards. You have the eight of wands, the three of swords. And the Fool. Okay, so with just these tarot cards first, we have a lot of magic and magic that stems from within you. So your personal power is what's trying to access you right now or what you're trying to access. And um, whatever your this personal power also always kind of drives us all into the flow of life or into our purpose okay so everything every time that you feel this three of swords you feel like you're interacting with a part of life that just rubs you the wrong way or just doesn't feel um, uplifting or you find yourself feeling tired or just exhausted from being here um, you are understanding the magic of living outside of this 
of this tornado. You're finding your magic that, that creates your own reality and allows you to find this innocence once again. Um, the fool for you guys today is representing this this ability to let go of what has been expected of you and what has locked you into this sort of uh, tumultuous mindset and you're allowing you're you're able to almost smell the roses again you're able to see things in a new light um, you feel much lighter you feel like you are able to be as magical and as beautiful as those things that you enjoy in life um, and yeah, we're, I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> so you've got movement, the card of movement. You've got the seven of swords and the queen of wands. So even more so, you have magic. I mean, the queen of wands with the eight of wands. The queen of wands is telling you that you are this queen. You are realizing and self-actualizing and letting go of everything that doesn't align with you and this is the point of this under this full moon you're releasing everything that people have fed to you over years and it, it makes sense that you believe them but you are allowing yourself to let go of them in a way that completely frees you it's not any it's not a self project anymore it's not a how you can be your best self it's how you can be your truest self this is getting back to the magic of being alive this is you um with movement once again yeah so the movement kind of represents just the shift in existence the shift in understanding the full energy coming back into your life it feels like everything can can sort of flow in and out of your life again and you don't feel so stagnant or or uh pierced down like with these seven of swords along with the three of swords uh you see that the woman is only carrying five she's left two behind so while our swords that we do bear um are by choice we think we find values or morals that are worth bearing the weight of i everyone should have these these are there are morals and things that are worth carrying the weight of okay being a good person comes with a certain weight um the saying ignorance is bliss is coming to me you're not going to find that bliss because you because ignorance is one thing that you're leaving behind right um the weight of ignorance is no longer serving you that's a message for somebody specific. But either way, you're finding what you can allow to leave behind. And this might be physical things. This might be emotional things. But under the magic of this full moon, you are sturdy enough. You are strong enough to walk away from the things that do not serve you. The things that have been keeping you in this one place. The, the things keeping you pierced in torment. You are allowing it to go and you are able to see light you're able to see life, I'm sorry, in this new light, in this new way, and you feel just completely energized with this power, this magic you have access to. Um, let's get into some oracle cards. So this first one says, our moods don't come and go. They appear and subject us to alchemy that transforms us. Okay, so your emotions are very important under this pink moon. Whatever you're feeling, and then this down here says, come grow with us. Whatever you're feeling under this pink moon, um, write it down. I'm hearing that you need to be journaling or recording the things that, that are happening in front of you so that you can understand the difference in in. Maybe in the next moon cycle, in a few weeks, in a few months, you'll be able to see the difference, how you've leapt from this sort of energy to this sort of energy. You've gone from dark, cloudy skies. It still surrounds you. It's still near you, okay? These, thing, these things aren't exactly leaving, like, the earth. You're not leaving the earth plane. They're, they're still going to exist, but you will be able to exist within it without ever having to dim your light. So um, your mood is subjecting you to alchemy. You are being pushed to understand your existence in a new way, okay? You're not just angry. You're not just upset. You're not just moody. You're, you're someone is something, some magic is trying to tell you something. Just like when uh, you get a stomach ache, that's your gut feeling, or that's your guides pushing you and telling you, knowing that you'll listen if your stomach hurts. So they will they will shift the energy to where your stomach will hurt, and then you'll listen to that intuition trying to come through. Um, okay, so innocence. I think I said innocence before with the fool. Um, 
innocence. It says, forgive oneself for past ignorance and breathe the invigorating air of qualified purity. And on the back, um, I wrote this deck myself, but on the back I wrote, innocence won only after years of struggle towards a deeply ethical life in a culture torn between naive ideals and cynical behavior allows one to find innocence. So once again, <laughs> you're sort of just separating. I know that I just said that this is a collective reading, but for a less major collective, you are separating from this mainstream cloud of darkness, okay? Um, I think that with this being the age of technology, we're really starting to try to understand how it can benefit us, but also how we can not allow it to control us. So what parts of your life can take a little bit of a cleanser from technology? How much of your existence are you basing on social media? I just recently myself have gotten rid of social media because it's helped me understand not needing validation outside of myself and especially with younger generations once you've grown up with social media it's very hard to understand that it hasn't always been a sort of a part of life you know um considering where you need to find innocence consider where or how people have lived before the, t the age of technology what did they do um or what do you as associate with innocence what did they do in other times to have innocent connection with each other um and if if it's the other way around and you can't find innocent connection with the people who are in your physical life maybe technology is serving you the ability to connect with people who are on the same wavelength who are who help you sort of come out of that but really this is a personal um transformation so either way be very intentional about what innocence means to you, what it means to your inner child, and how um, under the magic of the moon you can implement it into your life, how you can self-actualize into this, this literal magic at the tip of your fingers. Your reality will change. You will still, if you're looking for bad things, if you're watching the news, you will hear what the news has to say. What about the earth? What does the earth have to say? What do the trees in your backyard have to say to you? um yeah let's keep going i'm gonna save this one for a little bit later this one too okay so these two oracles were going to be telling us what's kind of blocking you what's keeping you from from even witnessing this magic you know what i mean we all have sort of those those beliefs or or ideals we all sort of have those beliefs or ideals that stick with us and we're not always so aware so these are like shadow ideas so we have a ward and naked award says accept your well-earned praise and naked says dare to dare to bear all so um i think this is obviously pointing out that you um i think i might have been kind of hitting the nail on the head with the social media and the external validation because it seems like there it's very easy for some people to exist um, within the terms they've been told they're allowed to that's where we get stuck in this heartbreak of wanting to be so much you're aware of magic you see it in in movies and books you have the imagination that is built from magic but the world kind of forces you into this small box and that box could very well be a phone or an instagram <laughs> reel and um we just forget that when we look up we feel we realize the actual magic of life and um the nakedness of life that you see this kind of floaty floating terrestrial magic floating through your reading um daring to bear all daring are we using are we using social media are we using whatever it is that's keeping our attention from this magic are we using it as a distraction are we keeping it um as a means to not have to face the entirety of the universe you see this is this person is in space like this isn't a small transition these these realizations that you're going through this shift that you're finding is not a small shift you're going to be finding an entire new way of living your life an entire new way of seeing your life and you have to your entire life has to change for that to be there your entire perception of your reality has to be there for it to um for it to actualize completely i hope i'm talking in a straight line but basically 
embody the morals and the values that you truly have don't get caught up in fighting battles that are not yours put those swords down you can you can't save the world no one can save the world but be present in the areas that you do choose to hold on to okay these are these are personal when you are not connected to the entire world via social media or technology period what swords are left to bear I think that's where we're coming down to with this, with these shadow aspects, the award, accept your well-earned praise. Um, where do you receive praise? Is it at work? Is it through technology? Is it within the family? Is that the praise that you need? And is that the praise that is really trying to come through? Are you actually receiving praise from this pink moon, from your guides? Are you receiving praise for the the obvious transition that you are making if you weren't ready to live this way you wouldn't be here listening to this reading accept the praise that your social i'm sorry your spiritual team is trying to give to you by you even acknowledging how magical you are how beautiful you are how grand you are how incredible you are Accept that praise. Accept that personal praise. Stand in the mirror and visualize yourself as magical as every single uh, story, fictional character you could ever, you've ever admired, okay? You've ever like glimpsed that and thought that's such a beautiful, wonderful, magical existence. I would love to be like them. You are that. You are, you are born of divinity. Realizing this, this self-actualization, uh, releasing and leaving behind the worries that this world creates for itself and returning back to nature, coming back to the reality of life. There's a whole entire, there's multiple dimensions that we cannot see, but this this dimension exists only in the 3D, okay? It keeps us locked in with our emotions and we get angry, we get upset, we get involved in these swords we can no longer bear. And rightfully so. No one is telling you not to care that the world is ending. And it's not ending. That's not to trigger anyone. But this world has a habit of throwing matches in the fires and then recording the fire with their phone and saying oh my god the, the forest is on fire if we just tune back into our personal lives use this technology as a benefit but not as an obsession you can you can find so much truth in your own existence and you stop looking for so much um choice here you go number 39 we have choice and it's a beautiful once again going along with with all of the other images you have here already you have the choice to be happy you have the choice to enjoy your life you have the choice to find peace if you need more resources seek those resources if you're not happy with your life if you, if your life is not as magical as you wish it to be something should shift something should should really move right now because you have the choice to enjoy every single bubble every single moment of life and you should you should do everything you can to get to that point and then you have number 31 a uh, sandalphon sandalphon uh the power archangel the power angel so I think once again before with the Queen of Wands and the power to leave behind what no longer serves you, you have the angel of power at your back. You are powerful. You have the power to change your reality. And it's not so much as waving a wand and seeing it change, but what, what you give your energy to is what makes up your reality, is what takes up space in your subconscious. What you are constantly thinking about, you're dreaming about. And what you're dreaming about, you constantly think about. So if we just shift them into positive things, and not even just totally positive, but the ethereal, the beautiful, the dark things, it doesn't even have to be the light. It can be the dark things. Things. It can be creativity. Um, there's power here. There's movement. Getting into dance, trying a new th a new way to move your body, and just get less stagnant. This world has created so many good robots. Don't be a good robot. Don't be a good consumer. Find your power. Find your choice. Find your ability to bear yourself to the real to the reality <laughs> of life of of magic that you want to exist within. Um, here we have a message from Isis or Aset. It says, The Eye of Horus. The Eye of Horus brings divine perception, protection, and insight. You are gifted with certain 
spiritual abilities, including divine sight that are awakening and growing now. You have much divine support and protection so that you may grow your abilities and serve others with your divine gifts. Trust your perception and know that you are divinely protected. Okay, so when you come to this point and you're ready to leave it behind and you need to look up to see the magic in your life, Every single anxiety, and I think that's why this one was coming up, our moods that are subjecting us to alchemy, every every mood that comes in, every anxiety, every fear, every worry, every thought that isn't from your highest self, write it down, look at it, and understand where it's coming from. Because most likely it was placed there by a parent or a teacher or some aspect of this fear-based realm, okay, this 3D realm, okay? It was placed there intentionally and it's worked so long it's kept you safe but right now from here on out you are divinely protected you don't need those fight or flight um instincts anymore because you have divine insight you will know when you do not need to show up somewhere you will know um when you should stay at home you will know when to protect your energy from someone you will have this insight you will not find yourself repeating these heartbreaking uh cycles anymore because you'll have the divine wisdom once you lean into knowing you have that divine wisdom and trusting that divine wisdom and magic it will show itself it will just simply be there you just have to realize it you just have to perceive it um i know that this is one of the biggest um obstacles i will say in most of our spiritual journeys is trusting it because again depending on how far along you are in life say i'm 23 i have 23 years of life to go up against i have 23 years of making excuses and having anxiety and depression and all of these fear-based thoughts and now i have all of those 23 years versus this one day where i've realized i am magic i am power i am power you know, I am able to be naked. I have the choice. I have innocence. I have one day versus those 23 years. So ultimately, be patient, but understand you are under this moon right now, this pink moon. You live in a universe that is full of magic, that things exist for no scientific reason. There is no 3D equivalent reason for some things as far as intuition or magic, but there are 12 other realms. There are there are. 12 realms above the third realm okay it goes all the way up to 12d that we have not accessed in this in this world okay collectively as a society we do not consider it that doesn't mean it's not there right we turn on the bluetooth speaker and we use it you don't see the bluetooth but it's the communication is happening you are the same thing spiritually the divine is always there always communicating you just have to be there to receive the information go with your gut see everything as a sign see everything as magic and it will all just continue to stir you are shifting you are causing movement in your own perception it's a beautiful beautiful thing and i'm so excited for you your last message today is overcome the desire to tame your wildness teach your mind to follow your heart exactly that's where your choice comes in and your mood comes in. We are following our hearts, okay? Whatever your mind, again, your mind, your brain at least, is your animalistic brain. It's there to protect you. It's there to um, be aware of certain threats and this and that. And it tells you to pay attention to things. But you're getting to the point of life where you are so divinely protected or you will soon be so divinely protected that your mind can rest you can start living through your heart you don't need to be so well thought out you can be spontaneous you can be innocent and you won't find consequences you will only find opportunities it will only come to you in beautiful eye-opening experiences and i wish you the very very best that's all i'm seeing for you today pile number one thank you for being here and um happy full moon Hello Pile 2, um, you guys picked the heart-shaped river rock and we are going to be getting into your reading, understanding what moon magic under this full pink moon in April is accessing you right now. So starting with your tarot cards.
we have the Page of Swords, the Queen of Wands, and the Star. Okay, so right off the bat here we have Self Mastery. Um, you see here, um, you've been on like a journey of self-discovery. You've been discovering what your gifts are, what it means to have gifts, and you've sort of been in between these two areas of like first picking up the sword and feeling the weight of it, and then sort of expanding with it and experimenting and understanding what you can do while wielding this sword. And then finally this this moon magic that's accessing you is the is what you need to completely realize your um, the words aren't even coming to me, the grandeur of the Im amount of magic and power you have within you. Um, this moon magic is helping you complete this cycle and completely step into your power, your magic, and no longer feel... Um, obviously, you'll always have to practice, but you don't feel like a beginner anymore. You feel like you are here for purpose. You You are being able to grasp within your perceptions and your um, your mental state that you are the star. Everything that's like all of this um, shade that you see around him, these were distractions of your previous life of um, society just existing in a world full of nonsense. This was, you know, discovering something magical. There's a lot of life that tells you to believe that it's not magical to, you know, to be... Um, cynical about it and to not trust it but you were led to believe in it and to sort of let this magic bloom within you you see her opening it's coming from her palm it's coming from within you um for a long time you were led away from your magic and you've rediscovered it and this moon magic that you're that you're under right now is helping you realize the entirety of your magic you're coming to this full circle moment where you see not only its origin, but your, like, there's no reason to doubt it anymore. There's no reason to downplay it anymore. You are fully, fully going into embodying the amount of magic you wish to have within you. It's no longer a question for you. Um, you've got two of wands, uh, two of pentacles, and the princess of swords. So... Once again, with the two of two of wands, two of staves here, um, you're being shown like contemplation, whereas before, like you're considering the world of darkness and the world of light. There's always that option, that choice for you to choose between which one you will subscribe to. Um, they're both always going to be there, but which one will occupy the energy within your life, right? Um, the Two of Pentacles also shows for you balancing. So maybe part of your magic is clearing the energy of the, the negativity in this world, um, balancing out the darkness with your light, or maybe it's using constructive darkness to um, clear away like energetic scams, basically. Like you just have this very grounding ability because you are the center from which your magic comes from, your power comes from, it's um, it's kind of like with, like the moon is very feminine. Femininity comes from darker magic and that's not bad. It's we're, This isn't a conversation of bad versus good, but just darker, which is just, you see her feet are in the water. It's like you're seeping in power and um, you can use it in any medium you'd like to. You just have to be intentional. I think that's what we're getting to is, Magic can be used for a lot of things. Um, you are the star or the star is showing up with the moon. So you just have the power to be something incredible. Um, everybody does, but you're, you're accessing the magic. You are capable of embodying that. Sometimes it's a little bit too much. You see like celebrities, they access quite a bit of power, but they don't really use it for anything other than ego stroking. Um, manipulation of themselves and others you are accessing this this powerful magic and you're using it to like shift reality you're using it to bring this balance into the earth plane so you're a very powerful powerful person uh princess of swords again just 
adding to this whole message that you are you are a learner you are an understander you're learning uh the truth of life you're and <laughs> i mean the words aren't really coming to me because it's just as simple as that you're just learning you're accepting your role that is to learn you're accepting your role that is to be here to be present to sit with your magic and not try to seek validation in any other area of life Um, <clears throat> continuing on with some oracle cards, we have being smart about life only keeps us from living it. Exactly. So, um, while you're in your studies, so this card is basically telling while you're in your studies, while you're developing your trust for your own power and your own magic, um, I want to say disregard logic, but also if that's like really hard for you to metabolize, just set logic to the side while you are considering magic, while you're considering uh, spirituality. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. While you're considering your spirituality and your magic, set logic to the side. Everything you've been taught as far as science, as far as the meaning of life, as far as religion, it just needs to be set to the side so that you have room to discover your own answers. Um, trying to be smart, trying to be productive about life keeps us from living it. When we're watching others, how we should be doing things, if we're studying something outside of us too closely, we forget to look within and forget to live our own lives. So um, the next one is science fiction stories are more about us than them. So again, this is just pointing out that you've always believed in magic. You've always been aware of magic and magic isn't even um, like the right word. I feel like just spirit, this energy that you're channeling right now, that, that feeling you get when life doesn't feel like an endless loop okay you know what i'm talking about this magic that you're feeling you've always been aware of it you've probably been really into books or movies or some sort of medium in your life that feels far away but for some reason you feel so drawn to it because you know that it's not far away you know that these stories are channeled from something this this energy that you um that occupies a lot of your mental space is you channeling something that you're either born from that you exist in in a spiritual plane or you just know it exists and science would have you believe otherwise it would keep you distracted and say no the only thing that exists is your job your house and your mortgage right but these science fiction stories that we're told are sort of like entertainment wise it's it's they do us a disservice by leading us to believe that it's not real in our world because I've never gone into my front yard and seen a unicorn, but I know that magic does exist and um, it's not going to exist in the same realm that does consider my mortgage so much more important than my quality of life, you know? So um, I would say consider these things, Consider what you've believed to be science fiction and understand that it might not just be visible on this realm, but you might also still be running into the vibrations of it and still perceiving messages from these science fiction stories or characters or themes, but really that is just your intuition, your, something inside of you connecting you to something greater than what science has deemed true or factual. So, set logic aside in both cases. Um, these next two cards are going to be showing us what's kind of blocking you from completely accessing this moon magic and being 100% present with it. Um, lottery. It says bet on yourself. And ocean. Go with the flow and flow with the glow. Okay, so that's really beautiful moon, <clears throat> especially with the full moon coming in. Um, so first of all, one thing that's possibly blocking you is you feel you're kind of, like I said in the beginning, you're kind of teetering between these two of just wielding the sword, having the physical representation, and then actually seeing the the 
non-visible things, perceiving the non-visible things, and leaning more into this reality that validates all of this magic for you. Bet on yourself. Bet that what you're feeling, these unicorns you're feeling inside of your heart, whatever it is, these angels you might be perceiving, fairies, whatever magic you feel drawn to, bet on yourself that it is true. Um, disregard any fear, any anxiety. Um, <clears throat> Spirit talks to you in a very specific and guiding way. It's never going to give you messages of doubt. If doubt is coming, that's from your brain, that's from your past, and it's no longer serving you. So allow it to be there, disregard it, set it to the side, and continue to bet on yourself. Continue to know that these your imagination does not fuel you with these images without it being based in something real. Um... And then with the ocean, I think it's just tying back into this living your life for you, going with the flow. And that's not with the flow of like, <laughs> um, again, standard life. For some reason, I'm being called to like point out the uh, importance of nine to five, the importance of money, even like physical paper money. Money and abundance are two different things. Um I'm hearing like a, a creative flow, a fertile flow. You need to do something under this moon that kind of validates your magic for you, whether it's creating a space, an altar, a work of art, something that anchors your vision of yourself or your magic or what you want your life to look like. Anchor it within something that you can return to. It could be a journal entry. It could be um, you go and buy a crystal or find a cool rock you know you guys have the river rock that's one I found literally in a river somewhere so maybe you're being called to um, find more spiritual anchors that you don't necessarily need to keep but you can find throughout your day so if you find tree spirits or um, you look at the clouds and you see messages through the clouds it's just sort of pushing you to channel in more ways than one channeling doesn't just have to be an oracle reading or <clears throat> Um, a meditation. It can be within everything you do. Messages and signs are everywhere. Bet on yourself. Bet on spirit to, to know that each and every one of them are intentional. There is no coincidence. It is intentional because you are developing such a beautiful, such a powerful, powerful relationship with your spirit, with your power, with your magic right now. Um, so it's going to take some wild, radical acceptance for it to be fully involved in your life. Um, next we'll do this one, and this one says progress, right? So you see in this image sort of a fairy or angelic being, and her wings are created out of butterflies. Her, she's got a lot of green around her, um, especially under this pink moon, and I don't know if you listened to the entire intro, but the pink moon is... It specifically is important because it reminds of reminds us of what nature is going through right now um, on this sort of like verge of spring. Everything is finding the power to be green again. Okay, we're growing through the dirt. We are seedlings that are just sprouting through, getting the nutrients we need. We're we're exiting rest and coming into that full expression of ourselves, so where we can. Uh, reap the benefits, reap the fruits of our labor, of our of our um, attention, you know, of your time and your intention. So this progress card is really, really beautiful, a great addition to what you already have going um, and sort of adds to this idea that a lot of your grounding or spiritual work will be found in nature and just sitting in nature. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do anything. Just be present in this life. That's all that spirit is asking and uh, sort of taking your fingers or your hands out of all of these pots and coming back to you. You can still be present with others. You can still be of service to others, but we all know you can't pour from an empty cup. So do what it takes to come back to that sort of self-solitude, okay? Everyone's life is their own responsibility, so make sure you're taking responsibility for yours first. Um, your angel today is Gabriel, um, the angel of resurrection, which is, <laughs> sorry, uh, 
this is a very beautiful message because once again the resurrection that we're we're speaking on today is the resurrection of your spirit um if we come back to i hope that this is in the camera if we come back over here to the page of swords that was your very first tarot card um you see this person surrounded by a lot of it just looks like confusing energy i won't call it anything other than confusing energy and growing up in a western society um you are bound to be confused by at least a few things okay and right now this this redeveloping of your spiritual power under the pink moon you know relying on the on the full moon's energy to connect you to this magic you are capable of right in all instances it's coming from within you um you're resurrecting your spirit you're resurrecting your connection with life with being alive you no longer are going to feel the weight of having a brain a mind and a soul i can go more into depth about that at another time but your human brain your spiritual mind and your soul recognizing that you have incarnated here for a reason you are not just this body you are something much more and you can tell you know i don't have to keep telling you you know these things you wouldn't be here listening to this message if it wasn't true you are resurrecting an energy within you around you or just your connection to this energy it's never ceased to be there you're just resurrecting your awareness of what you are where you come from and what you're capable of um <clears throat> we have a really beautiful card from the isis oracle or aset it says rising sun a dark phase and struggle is over. A new phase is upon you, one of hope, glory, light, and triumph. It is won through boldness and persistence. You have been through much, and now victory is upon you, beloved. For the divine solar child, a new consciousness within you is born. Exactly. That new consciousness, you are completely aware of the grandeur of life it's no longer simple things like that nine to five we were talking about like paper money we were talking about these are all very tangible very 3d elemental things and up until now that's what your life has revolved around but you're evolving into this new consciousness where magic does exist in your life where greenness is what is what propels your life and not the green of money the green of just being alive right these leaves that just you go outside and you see life happening you don't really see a lot of life within money um that's some contemplation again that you can do on your own just realizing the difference of what you've considered to be important what you've been told to consider is important and what really makes you feel important i feel like there might be some undertones of uh, mental health here if you've struggled with mental health okay i'm so sorry about that my camera died <clears throat> anyways we were talking about mental health and how it may have been an issue whereas like growing up in this western world over here um in this confusing world if anything spiritually divisive world of course you're going to find some obstacles regarding mental health regarding fitting in um a lot of what is told to us when we're growing up is what we need to do in order to be accepted right and um, a lot of what you're discovering goes directly against all of the science and the facts and the things that we base this 3d realm on so um, finding these spiritual answers accepting the spiritual consciousness is going to be liberating you in a way that you don't need to rely so heavily on the validation of science or fact or logic anymore that's why we're setting it to the side that's why we're not trying to be smart necessarily or methodical or productive about life um, we're just kind of shifting into what productivity actually looks like what the meaning of life actually is to you and what it has to do with the greenness of life okay um, and then the last little message we have today is dismiss thoughts that don't lead to the garden of infinite possibilities. And I think this is sort of a mic drop on your guys' reading. Um, first of all, this garden of 
infinite possibilities, okay? This the the expansiveness of nature is that it can live anywhere. It goes everywhere it's welcome, and it usually fights back when it isn't welcome, right? Um infinite fo infinite possibilities is what is this star within you that you are this magic that is coming out of you this magic that is within you that you're discovering it is infinite it is whatever you want it to be if you want it to be nine to five uh paper money abundance you know what i mean it will be that for you but it can be other things too it can be this science fiction that we've been portrayed uh, false or at an arm's length away or even mythical or historical even and not in this age your magic can be whatever you want it to be and dismissing those thoughts that don't lead to that garden that don't support you in believing this and and support you in choosing the side that supports you um that's i mean what what we've been discussing is just setting it to the side coming back to what the truth of your existence is and that is for you to discover uh with that i'm going to leave off here group two thank you so much for being here today i hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and happy happy full moon hello group number three you chose this beautiful mookite chunk and we are going to be getting straight into your reading with your um tarot cards um and once again we are just discovering what the moon magic is trying to give you what what moon magic is accessing you okay straight off the bat we have the empress with a full moon in the picture <clears throat> we have the page of wands okay and the five of cups Okay, so this leads me to believe that you are a very smart person, <laughs> okay, um, and not even in the logical way, but in a way that you are already very intuitive, and if you don't recognize it as intuition, you just already have very strong gut feelings. You might have bad stomach aches or headaches and not feel like it's a blessing, but you are already kind of connected to the magic of the moon. Um, <clears throat> you are giving off like beginner energy as far as the specifics go when it comes to magic, when it comes to directing your intention or your spirit or understanding this magic or these signs. Um, but you are very much capable. You're very much involved spiritually, okay? And if it's not you, your guides are spiritually involved. Your guides are here for you. Yeah, you have fertility here. Um, you have four of pentacles, ten of pentacles, wow, and the five of cups again, okay. Okay, so generally I'm gathering that, um, first of all, you have four very abundant cards and then fertility, and within them you have five of cups. So not only are you an abundant person, but you've lost, you've experienced loss surrounding your abundance, whether that be in family, um, money, um, property, whatever you know what it is when, when we're talking about these things. But uh, <clears throat> with both five of cups, three cups are spilled, two are still standing, which basically means that Though you have faced hardships, though you have faced um, certain obstacles, they those obstacles are almost a cosmological reasoning um, to connect you to this abundance, okay? So, like, the, the purpose of duality within the universe is that darkness cannot exist without light, right? Um... So your suffering cannot exist without the opposite, without your abundance on the other side. So really, I think that the, the magic that's accessing you right now is the um, power to move on, the power to look up from your losses, the power to look up from heartbreak, the power to sort of get your head back above water, okay? To come back up to the surface and reignite this fertility, this love for life. And this doesn't really mean physical birth. 
um, this really just kind of brings back like your understanding for why you're here. Your purpose is returning to you. You see this this uh, red gem within this person here kind of looks like a root chakra. So you're rediscovering your safety and your security because you come from these very potent um, energies. You come from the Empress herself. You embody the Empress when you are at your fullest self. And this doesn't mean like the swinging back and forth from manic to depressive, okay? This means moving up, uh, moving on from depressive episodes into your most powerful self. You are just going to be changing your life from this view of loss, this view of suffering into appreciation. And it's not like you deserved to go through these things, of course, but you're understanding that what you have been through, what you have lost does not define the amount of your abilities, the amount of your magic, okay? Um, I'm going to go right into the oracles, and it says uncertainty about gender leads us to discovering masculinity and femininity. Okay, so with this, um, I think that's a beautiful addition to the fertility card because I think you are under this moon, you are discovering what, what fertility means to you, what creation means to you, and how it can be balanced between masculine and feminine. I don't think that gender really is an important thing to you, or if it is, it might be um, an obstacle that you're also getting around, but I think the point here with this, with this spread so far is that um, there might be a heavy influence on the importance of gender roles in your upbringing, or that might be sort of what's causing this, like, this loss, you know what I mean? Someone has dumped out your cup and said you you weren't filling it correctly. You weren't being this this empress correctly. That there is no definition to it when it comes to spiritually. There is no gender, honestly. So discovering the energies behind what we do, the intentions behind what we do, and taking it out of the um, <clears throat> biases that we've been handed, then you get to rediscover once again what you are, who you are, what you do, what your energy means to you, what it can do for you. Um, that might have been like a roundabout message, but I think that that's either for a very specific group of people or maybe it's for this entire group. Um, <clears throat> wow, okay, so your life does not begin the day you are born. Also, um, I've called to say this too now that this sort of uncertainty about gender could be an influence of past lives so more than likely you've experienced more than one life um, if you believe in reincarnation or uh, multi-dimensional universe um, this basically goes to say that you are not just what you are today okay you are everything before and after today okay so <laughs> It's really hard to describe in words, but this energy right now is just trying to prove to you that whatever you're feeling like, um, whatever's making you feel like less than, whatever's making you feel like um, just sort of this disconnect, I think I'm picking up on this disconnect from meaning and point of life, it has nothing to do with you. These issues that, that this 3D realm has created has nothing really to do with you or your magic. Um, there's a lot of power in labels, but there's a lot of power in not assigning any labels because you allow fluidity. Um, and this goes for gender, but this goes for anything, truly. Maybe you should sit with a notebook and list out what labels you do go by, whether that be um, the relationships you hold, the titles you hold, the names you hold, and realize which ones you've assigned to yourself and which ones have been assigned to you. Which ones would you like to keep being called? Which ones would you like to reinvent? This is sort of about self-discovery, but the self that expands this lifetime, the, the self that expands the physical body, okay, it, it proceeds what you see in front of you okay it's not bound by your body your body is actually the least important thing about you okay you have such a uh a, uh sorry excuse me a wide diverse um i mean you've got desert here you've got celestial clouds you've got forest you've got more forest you've got ocean you have everything within you, you have the cosmos within you your body is simply a vehicle for you to be here and experience certain things it has no 
um, influence or it should have no influence on the quality of your life. <clears throat> so moving on, I picked these two oracle cards to sort of show us um, possible blockages or what might be keeping you from completely accepting the magic that the moon is trying to access to you or give to you. Okay, so guide, follow in the footprints of greatness with a very beautiful image right here. Um, <clears throat> I think this is really trying to, trying to bring comfort to what you're going through, that you follow the footprints of greatness. This is not going to be someone like, you know, there's the word role model or there's um, someone you look up to or who you want to be when you grow up. It precedes, once again, this 3D realm. It precedes this life. Um, it even precedes this this timeline. Your footprints of greatness that you're following are something you have to discover. It won't be in a book. <clears throat> you might get inklings of this energy, but you really are going to have to develop this idea that you just exist outside of what you've been told is the bounds of existence okay that's a very open-ended message but um you're you're very capable okay <clears throat> i'm an airplane spread your wings and fly so yeah once again you're just disregarding everything everyone that's ever told you exactly what you are you are this divine light and you can be whatever you want to you can expand into anything okay this is greenness this is this is it's just there are no bounds to your existence whatever you are labeled by i strongly suggest considering removing or setting them to the side to contemplate who you are if you're not being told who to be okay who you are if you're not being told who to be very <laughs> very specific suggestion there um, you have number 24, seek seclusion. Okay, uh, once again, okay, so this is visually, we see quite the fairy landscape. You have fairies over here, a person on a horse who seems sort of tempted and a person who's fallen asleep in the grass. So seeking seclusion for you, once again, is just sort of distancing from the world that's made you become so defensive or made you feel so empty okay um this isn't we're not stirring up like spiritual psychosis okay if you feel like you're not ready don't go there if you feel like you are ready seek that seclusion you can stand you can validate your experience for yourself it does not need to be proven on the internet or through a book or through anyone else's opinion it's lovely to have community in the sense of of belonging but sometimes you have to find that you belong elsewhere you belong in your imagination um you wouldn't be able to imagine it if it wasn't real okay so you're and look at this full moon once again with the empress and the one here on seeking seclusion you're just you are discovering this new uh view of life i think view is the word they want me to use <clears throat> so seeking seclusion and your angel today is joe Fail. i think i'm saying that right and it's creative power wow what a beautiful one to add creative power along with the ten of pentacles and four of pentacles i didn't really give them any justice but creative power this abundance that we're talking about and even this uncertainty of self okay is allowing you to clear the slate um you've never felt like you've belonged because you are still supposed to create that belonging for yourself you are supposed to create that reality for yourself which basically means going into whatever it is that makes you feel valid that's why those labels don't really do you any justice because when you go into nature, the squirrel doesn't call the tree tree, okay? It just lives in it. They just have the relationship. They don't have uh, terms for each other, right? Us as humans have verbalized everything, have made entire languages to debate things we'll never understand. But here we are trying to confine things within equations, mathematics, and science, when really there are just inexplicable pieces of life. And accepting that for you will, will turn these cups right, right side up 
and you'll feel the abundance of life, the, the abundance of breath, okay? The abundance of material and spiritual material. It will just come to you. You will not need to seek anything. It will be coming to you, okay? Lean into that. Make space for that. Feel empowered by this. This is nothing to fear. You are being guided. This is one of those blockages. The guide is trying to get to you and... Um, your human brain is kind of being a little bit overpowering towards your spiritual mind. So, <clears throat> the Oracle of Isis, we have an image here, and this the message is Wings of Isis. You have a special spiritual relationship with the angelic world. Wow. Part of your soul purpose is to birth angelic consciousness and values such as fearlessness, compassion, and service into this human culture. This oracle also brings your angelic assistance, intervention, and confirmation too. Okay, uh, need I say more? You know what I mean? These guides, they're here. Those, those feelings, those gut feelings you get, that's what we're seeing here again. Um, take everything as a message, okay? Do not discount anything. What If someone tells you not to believe in whatever you want to believe in, screw them. You know, you know. It's just internal. There aren't always words to describe it, so it feels like it's not real, but this is just a new, a different level, okay? Not higher or lower. This is a different level of perception that you are entering, and not everyone will be able to relate, okay? But there are people in this earth, in this culture, in this human culture that do need your help, that do need to see you living fearlessly, fearlessly believing in your magic, in your divinity, for them to sort of understand that they're also capable of those beautiful things okay that's why it does you so much justice to just sign off whatever the world thinks of you because it doesn't change the fact of who you are right someone can label you anything someone can label you in a derogatory way but that doesn't make you that derogatory thing that just points out who they are and what they believe you to be but that doesn't change who you really truly are so rediscovering who you are underneath all of those uh, labels, you get to connect into this angelic assistance, which is what we see over here, which is you probably come from an angelic realm, which is why you're so connected with fertility. I mean, we have fertility confirmed at least four times here. You are so much more than what you've believed, you've been led to believe you've lost, okay? That is important for you to hear. <clears throat> and the last message we have for you, another full moon. Um, find a place of quiet solitude and listen to the goddess of the moon. Is she calling for more love? Wow. Okay, so you have a very pointed message here. Um, not only do you have the moon popping up in so many different areas, you have seeking seclusion. Um, and I think that this seclusion is not cutting off the world. It's putting up a gate, an intentional gate between you and the world. And within this gate, you create your reality, okay? You create your value system. You exist and operate off of it. And everything else is outside of the gate. You're allowed to let things in. You're allowed to let things out. Um, but creating this sort of spiritual gate around you helps you understand... Um, or helps you just clarify the communication between you and your angels, okay? You and your angels, you and the moon. The moon is talking to you specifically. She is coming to you, and uh, I mean, there's no better way to put it. You are just spiritually there trying to connect you there, reaching out. You just have to let go of these things that have been um, intentionally placed within you to block out their messages, okay? And the moon, oh, the moon appears five times on this five of cups. You, I just, I, I can't keep repeating myself here. I mean, I just go over and over. You have so much to discover and it all starts with, uh, your uncertainty and seeing the uncertainty as an opportunity and not as something that's harming you anymore, okay? Um, you're a beautiful, beautiful person and you have beautiful energy surrounding you. Um, yeah, that's all I'm seeing for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful full moon.